You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. Netflix's crime thriller Ozark and the royal drama The Crowns each earned six Critic Choice Award nominations Monday. Lovecraft Country from HBO, Mrs. America from FX, Schitt's Creek from Pop, and What We Do in the Shadows from FX earned five nods apiece, while Better Call Saul from AMC and The Plot Against America from HBO each are up for four awards. The streaming service Netflix led the field with 26 nominations, and premier cable network HBO followed close behind with 24 nods. The Creative Choice Award CEO Joey Berlin said, We're so thrilled to be celebrating the incredible work that was released during this extended year. In a year when the need for entertainment was undeniable, the industry rallied to deliver a beautiful series that delighted us, educated us, challenged us, and most importantly brought us all together. The winners will be announced during a March 7th ceremony hosted by entertainer Ty Diggs. The nominees in the top categories are for Best Drama. Nominees include Better Call Saul, The Crown, The Good Fight, Lovecraft Country, The Mandalorian, Ozark, Perry Mason, and This Is Us. For Best Actor in the Drama, the nominees include Jason Bateman for Ozark, Sterling K. Brown for This Is Us, Jonathan Majors for Lovecraft Country, Josh O'Connor for The Crown, Bob Oldenkirk for Better Call Saul, and Matthew Race for Perry Mason. For Best Actress in the Drama, the nominees include Christine Baranski for The Good Fight, Olivia Colman for The Crown, Emma Corrin for The Crown, Claire Danes for Homeland, Laura Lindley for Ozark, and Janice Smollett for Lovecraft Country. For Best Supporting Actor in a Drama, the nominees include Jonathan Banks for Better Call Saul, Justin Hartley for This Is Us, John Lithgow for Perry Mason, Tobias Menzies for The Crown, Tom uh, Pelfrey for Ozark, and Michael K. Williams for Lovecraft Country. For Best Supporting Actress in a Drama, the nominees include Gillian Anderson for The Crown, Cynthia Evero for The Outsider, Julia Garner for Ozark, Janet McTeer for Ozark, Winumi Masuk. Uh, Mosaku for Lovecraft Country and Ray Seahorn for Better Call Saul. The best comedy nominees include Better Things, The Flight Attendant, Mom, Penis, Rami, Schitt's Creek, Ted Lasso, and What Do We Do in the Shadows. For Best Actor in a Comedy, the nominees include Hank Azaria for Brock Meyer, Matt Berry for What Do We Do in the Shadows, Nicholas Holt for The Great, Eugene Levy for Schitt's Creek, Jason Sudeikis for Dead Lasso, and Rami Youssef for Rami. For Best Actress in a Comedy, the nominees include uh, Pamela Aldalon for Better Things, Christina Applegate for Dead to Me, Kelly Kuko for The Flight Attendant, Natasha Demetrio with What Do We Do in the Shadows, Katherine O'Hara for Schitt's Creek, and Issa Rae for Insecure. For Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy, the nominees include William Fitchner for Mom, Harvey Gillian for What Do We Do in the Shadows, Daniel Levy for Schitt's Creek, um, Alex Newell for Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, Mark Prosh for What Do We Do in the Shadows, and Andrew Rannells for Black Monday. For Best Supporting Actress, the nominees include Lisey Garanson for The Connors, Rita Moreno for One Day at a Time, Annie Murphy for Schitt's Creek, Ashley Park for Emmy in, Emily in Paris, Jamie Presley for Mom, and Hannah Waddingham for Ted Lasso. And uh, for Best Limited Series, the nominees include I May Destroy You, Mrs. America, Normal People, The Plot Against America, The Queen's Gambit, Small Acts, The Undoing, and Orthodox. And for Best TV Movie, the nominees include Bad Education, Between the World and Me, The Clark Sisters, First Lady of Gospel, of Gospel Hamilton, Sylvie's Love, and What the Constitution Means to Me. Peaky Blinders creator Stephen Knight announced Monday that the upcoming sixth season will be the British gangster drama's last. He said in a statement on the BBC Netflix series website that filming has begun on the final episodes. Knight said in a statement, Peaky is back and with a bang. After the enforced production delay due to the COVID pandemic, we find the family in extreme jeopardy and the stakes have never been higher. We believe this will be the best of series of all and are sure that our amazing fans will love it. While the TV series will be coming to an end, the story will continue in another form. The Peaky, the Peaky Blinders Twitter feed featured a photo of star Cillian Murphy wearing a face mask as he gets his hair cut into his character Tommy Shelby's signature clothes crop style. 
the series, which takes place in early 20th century Britain, co-stars Helen McCrory, Anya Taylor-Joy, Paul Anderson, and Sam Clafkin. Ben Affleck and his girlfriend, uh, Knives Out star Anna de Amros, have split up after less than a year of dating, according to multiple news reports Monday. The pair met in New Orleans while collaborating on the upcoming thriller Deep Water. They began their romance in March. People.com cited an unnamed source the same Monday. Ben is no longer dating Anna. She broke it off. Their relationship was complicated. Anna doesn't want to be Los Angeles-based, and Ben obviously has to since his kids live in Los Angeles. Affleck has three young children with his ex-wife, actress Jennifer Gardner. An insider told usmagazine.com about the Amaros. The breakup was amicable, but she was the one who called things off. Ben and Anna were moving in different directions in their lives and stopped seeing eye to eye. The two couldn't work through their differences and have decided to end their relationship. A uh, source on E! News says both of them have completely full lives in a good way. There will always be that love. ET Online also said it confirmed the breakup. Actor Noah Centineo announced on social media that he had undergone a tonsillectomy. Uh, he said on Sunday on Instagram, got my tonsils taken out two, year, two days ago. Goodbye chronic tonsillitis and strep throat. I hope you enjoy your free stay for the last seven years. The post included in a photo of him wearing sunglasses and sitting in the passenger seat of a car. He also shared a short clip of him wearing a shower cap and sitting in a hospital bed opening his mouth wide so everyone can see down his throat. The 24-year-old actor is known for his roles in The Fosters, Perfect Date, and To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Pop star Justin Timberlake has announced his wife, actress Jessica Biel, gave birth to their second child in 2020. Timberlake said in an interview to air on Monday's episode of The Ellen DeGeneres Show that his infant son's name is um, Phoenix. Um, the DeGeneres shared a preview of the virtual chat on Twitter Sunday night. Timberlake said of his baby boy after DeGeneres prod him to, for details, he's awesome and he's so cute. Nobody is sleeping, but we are thrilled. The couple had not publicly announced they were expecting or had welcomed a child before this confirmation. The singer did not, exactly, did not say exactly when Phoenix was born. Uh, Timberlake and Beale have been married since 2012. They, also have, they are also the parents of a five-year-old son named Celias. And finally, Garth Brooks announced Monday he'll perform at the President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration in Washington, D.C. Brooks will be joined by Jennifer Lopez and Lady Gaga as part of the lineup of entertainers for the swearing-in ceremony at the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday. Brooks says, this is a great day in our household. This is not a political statement. This is a statement of unity. This is history, and it's an honor to get to serve. This is a common theme in every presidential election, new beginnings, new starts, but it is the world unity, the world love, the word that we belong to each other. It is going to take us all, all of us, what, what I want for all of us to do is listen. We are more div we're more divided than ever. That bridge that brings us together, it is reached across loving one another because this is what is, get is going to get us through the most divided times that we've had. Inauguration rehearsals were interrupted and the U.S. Capitol was locked down Monday after a fire at a nearby homeless encampment caused a temporary security alert. There was no threat to the public, officials say. Most of the inauguration events will be virtual this year because of the coronavirus pandemic and security threats after the storming of the U.S. Capitol by a mob on January 5th and 6th. And that is your entertainment report for Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app 
Search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.